Hi, Ninja Nerds. In this video, we're going to talk about mixing insulin. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe. Also, check out ninjanerd.org where we have our whiteboard illustrations and notes where you can check out for every lecture that we put up. Let's get started. So mixing insulin, what is it? What are we talking about here? In the NCLEX, this question typically pops up as a drag and drop or even a, a nurse is overseeing a student nurse and when should she or he intervene. And we're gonna be looking at the steps here so that you understand what we should be doing when we mix insulin. So the first thing is the purpose of mixing insulin is just to reduce the subcutaneous injections. Typically our patients that are getting mixed insulin are getting insulin multiple times a day. They also may be getting a long acting insulin as well. So we wanna make sure that we can cut down on those injections by mixing the ones that can be mixed together. And the ones that can't be mixed, like our long, la long acting insulin, like Lantus, should never be mixed. Those should be given separately on their own. But when we do mix insulin, we can be mixing things like our intermediate and our short acting insulins, like our NPH and our regular. So we're never going to mix our long acting. And when we do give insulin, we're going to be remembering certain things like we're going to check our patient for hypoglycemia, right? We're going to make sure our blood sugar is good, check our blood glucose. We're going to see if they have any signs of hypoglycemia, like sweaty, clammy, and increased heart rate or confusion. Typically, patients will say something like, I, I don't know, my, my sugar feels weird or I feel off. Can you check my sugar? And when you do check their blood glucose before giving insulin, if it's too low, you're just going to make sure you hold the dose and notify the healthcare provider. When we do have patients in the hospital, there is a parameter per facility that we're looking at for our blood glucose. Typically, if it's too low, it's a number usually under 70. But every patient is a little different and every facility might be a little different as well. So for the NCLEX, you just remember something under 70 is usually an indication of hypoglycemia, but it is different in the real world per facility and per their parameters per that patient. Once we check our patient, they are not hypoglycemic, their blood sugar is in a, or glucose is in a correct level that we can be administering their insulin. We are then gonna make sure we do our medication rights, verify the order. We want to make sure that we're gathering their supplies. Make sure that you're getting insulin subcutaneous needles. And if you don't know what those are, check them out. They have a unit written on the side. They won't have milliliters. They won't have anything else written. It should say units. And there's a couple different versions, but it could be a 50 unit or 100 unit syringe. You want to make sure you inform the patient of what's going on. Tell them you're going to be giving them their insulin. You're going to perform your hand hygiene. You're going to put on gloves. And then once you have your NPH, you can either roll, so you're gonna roll it between your hands, or you can invert it. You never wanna shake it, because when you shake it, it can create little air bubbles that you can draw up into your syringe. When we do this, we wanna make sure that we also inform our patient that when they take an intermediate NPH, an intermediate acting insulin, it can reach its peak up to eight hours, and a regular, which is a short acting, will reach its peak up into two hours. And this is to create coverage that is a little more linear instead of giving them peaks and drops in their uh, blood glucose. We want to make their blood glucose a nice linear, hopefully just a little bit of waveforms if we can. So what are we going to do? How are we going to do this drag and drop question or how are we going to intervene if our student nurse is doing something wrong? The steps that we need to go through, besides the hand hygiene, the gloves, and then the rolling or the inversion of the NPH, is we are going to, one, clean the tops of each vial with separate alcohol. So you wanna make sure you clean the NPH, throw that alcohol swab away, and then clean the top of the regular, throw that alcohol swab away. You then wanna inject air into the NPH, right? Then you want to inject air into the regular, once the syringe is already in the regular, you're then going to draw the regular up and draw the NPH, right? And some things to remember is to rotate your sights and administer once it's drawn up within five to 10 minutes because the NPH and the regular can act on each other and decrease their effectiveness. So you're, you're probably sitting there like, Kristen, you're saying inject the air. What the heck, do you, what, what does that even mean, inject the air? So when we give insulin, NPH, and regular, where's usually an order for each one. So let's just say for the NPH, we are going to be giving them five units. And for our regular, we are gonna be giving six units. Say we're doing that, right? 
So when you have your syringe, you're going to pull back on the plunger for five units and inject that air into the NPH. Boom, five units goes in. Then you're going to pull up your six units and inject that air into the regular. Once you're done, you're going to invert with that vial on and pull back your six units of regular and then go to the NPH and pull back your five units of NPH. And you should have a total of 11 units in your syringe. Does that make sense? Now, I wanted to give you guys a awesome mnemonic that you could remember this because there's a lot out there like you can do one before the other. You can remember RN because that's a registered nurse. And I wanted something funny. I wanted to come up with something for you guys to help you remember that it's the NPH, regular, regular NPH, but I couldn't. So if you Ninja Nerds have one down below in the comment section, comment down below that mnemonic because I couldn't come up with one and I particularly like to have things that are funny within the process. So I want to have the, the air and then the draw of the insulin up. So if you got a good one, make sure you comment it down below. But that is our video on mixing insulin. I hope it makes sense and I hope you get this question right on your NCLEX. And as always, until next time.